Hi, this is Juanito, and I am looking forward to showing you a couple of pointers here that I find very helpful when developing picado and you know faster scale runs and so on. Um, three main things I want to focus on here. First is just the, actually the placement of the left hand. A lot of people don't think a whole lot about the left hand when practicing scales other than just you know trying to keep up with the right hand. But a couple important things, at least one very important thing um, I want to point out is the placement of the fingertips um, basically near the fret. That's going to give you a consistent and solid from the instrument, you know, getting towards the middle or back side of the fret is something that, especially when we're playing faster, we can easily get a little sloppy about that. But we want to stay up, practice staying up near the near the fret when we practice um, at the different speeds that will be, you know, as you do your picado studies. So, and then, you know, uh, keeping the angle, especially up uh, in this, the lower frets here, playing a bit on the side like this gives you you know, access to, to be able to sort of reach easily over to the next fret instead of kind of, you know, staying a little too close to the, if you're doing something chromatic, for example. So anyway, staying up near, you know, the back side of the, the fret is going to improve and give you a very, you know, big boost to your tone overall for whatever you're playing, whether it's picado or anything else. Um, then, uh, for the right hand, as much as the left hand, it's completely vital to stay totally relaxed. So I like to practice um, actually finding speeds where I can breathe because nothing worse than a little tension to slow you down or make you sore or, you know, eventually turn into tendonitis, you know, if you, uh, if you were to do it. So staying nice and loose um, through breathing, actually. So if you find a speed with or without your metronome where you're making sure you're always breathing, then you can gradually speed up and you don't want to lose that ease of breath. Um, you know, and so, so thirdly then is, is what I call the sound of a short note or preparation is, is a more standard term for it, but in the case of picado, the preparation that I'm talking about is this. So if you play with your index finger and then you place quickly your next finger, the, the middle finger in this case, so and then I play with the middle finger and play and replace the index finger immediately. So, before playing the string, I'm actually, I'm actually doing this preparation where I'm setting the next string down and thus cutting this, the note short. So you actually, at a slower speed, you actually there's a, a space between notes. And once that becomes comfortable, staying relaxed and breathing, Almost like if you're walking down a hill and you just relax and you start running, the picado can very naturally speed up. And the thing there is, um, rather than have a real focus on the movement, it's good to look at it sometimes too and see what your fingertip is doing, but rather than focus on that, uh, what you can actually do is, I've discovered that if I'm just really thinking of the sound, pop, 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 really short note, the finger quite naturally will find the most efficient path. So instead of like flapping your fingers around trying to get fast, you actually have this sound of the short note, I like to call it. I just imagine that quick sound and the fingers will respond by finding the most efficient path. It's awesome, actually. It's a big, a big difference in the way I feel when I do that than if I'm staring at the hand trying to tell my fingers to move a small amount. So anyway, when I practice something like this, chromatic exercise, then so here you can see I'm combining the three things I've just talked about: the placement of the left hand up near the fret, um, this sound of the short note. Definitely think about relaxation in both hands and breathing. So you might not hear the breathing, but anyway, it's definitely going on. And then and this is the way that I develop speed. Um, I like to take these sort of straight ahead, you know, kind of four finger chromatic type exercises 
as you know, just as a very simplified way of looking at the uh, the mechanics for both hands. And of course, there's endless variations, different scales, and different uh, different kinds of exercises. You know, later you can do arpeggiations, things like that with the arpeggios. Sort, but in terms of scales, I really like to practice just these chromatic things at first. I'm going to uh, put up subsequent videos, including some practice videos, where I'll go over some exercises we can sort of do together. But mainly, um, I wanted you to just think about these concepts and and work on that. And then, you know, when you want to put it together, you know, we'll do the. Uh, hopefully, you'll join me for the the exercise videos. And mainly, I like to just go up and down the single strings and then this way with something like this. I find that with that, if you can, I mean, put it this way, if you can't sound good and feel comfortable doing that kind of thing, it's very, very unlikely you're going to sound good and feel comfortable doing something that's more complicated. So I like to really hone in on something basic like that and make sure the mechanisms are really solid. So I hope that has uh, helped you and, and look forward to seeing you on future videos. Okay, good luck.